Good day everybody and welcome back to the Woodcrafts by Design Shop. I'm Joshua Iverson and the video today is more or less a follow-up video to the tool topic that I released a couple weeks ago on the Festool LR32 hole drilling system. And today's video is all about the tips and tricks that I use to make the most out of the system and make it work better for me. To get started, like I said in my tool topic video, I use the LR32 hole drilling system not as a complete system to build frameless cabinets, but just primarily use it as a means to drill adjustable holes for adjustable shelves. And to get started, since I only really use this system for that function, my first couple of tips and tricks I have to give all have to do with setup and teardown of this particular system. And it begins with the stopper bars here that come in the kit comes with two of them and on smaller shorter cabinet sides where your guide sticks out both off both ends you could use this guy you know both of them one at each end I typically only use one and just move it from one end to the other when I'm when I'm adjusting but one of the things that I did because I use the same setting every time I used a sharpie marker to mark that particular side so I know when I attach this to the guide rail that I know that this, these two stubs need to go in the guide holes on the ends with the black mark sticking out off the end so I know I've got the same setting every time. My next suggestion has to do with these with these guide rails that come with the kit. Two of them come with the kit and they attach to the guide plate and what their purpose is is to hold the guide plate a certain distance away from the side of your cabinet wall so that way the holes are drilled in a straight line and you can adjust where those holes are from the side using these guide rails. Now the problem with the fest with these guide rails is Festool, this is a molded molded black plastic you know piece and the guide the, the rail here has metric values you know etched or printed on the thing it's on the rail itself and inside this plastic thing here there's little annotations as to where you can line it up along with these other measurements now the problem I have is that it's black on black and these little little nubbies that they put on here don't stand out to my eye very well so it takes a little good hard read now what I've done to this one is I've actually taken the line system and took like a uh, a sharpie paint marker and marked around the zero nubby let that dry and then I went over the top of the raised line with a sharpie marker to black it out so that way it's consistent it can be found every time without looking too hard and it lets you index the stop better now I didn't do the other one to show as a comparison but this is the one I did do compared to the one I didn't do. See, it's just kind of hard to see. So, that helps with speedy setups. I normally use the same millimeter setting for all my cabinet sides, but there are times where I have to adjust it for, you know, the rare side that's a little bit different that has to be adjusted for. And my other quick tip as far as the adjusting these on the rail itself because you have to adjust them up and down depending on the size of the cabinet side and everything is I found that these little things are hard to turn in my hands especially up against the rail and they just basically there's a solid piece of plastic stopping here and a little backer metal backer plate that the screw tightens against and I find that even at full tightness these things don't really grab the rail super tight because they're already at their max tolerance so I found that if I just leave them pretty much at tightness and put the metal to the back of the rail and push push down it just it stays in place and it makes it easier to move you know basically could just pop it off move it to the next position without having to, to unscrew it every single time now the next thing I want to talk about I mentioned in my tool topic video was this particular numbering system that I use on the rail. This 
the guide plate that the router attaches to has a little viewing window here and at every stop I have a, no, I have a number system starting out from the center working their way out and what that allows me to do is when I get to a particular cabinet side or if I'm batching out a whole bunch of cabinet sides that are all the same size basically I can get my stop, my end stop put in place, my guides put in place where they need to go slide this in basically lay out where my holes want to go you know and then I mark it back here on the rail based on what my numbers are so for this cabinet side it's nine, not hole number nine this way and hole number nineteen on the other side of center this way so that's just one little tip you know they give you that viewing window for a reason I didn't read anything in the manual about why they give that to you but I've just decided to do this with my system and it works out perfect if you annot if you annotate where which holes you are using so you can get a consistent hole pattern every time and it makes it really nice to index where you're at based off that number system as opposed to every every time you do this you gotta figure out okay I'm gonna go from this hole to this hole and then mark it somehow or mark it with tape you know if you just you just write down the numbers within that little viewing window you have consistent the same thing every time and it's, it takes all the guesswork out of it. My next bit, bit of advice that I have to give is when you're actually using this system and drilling the adjustable shelf holes. If you saw in my last my tool topic video when I showed actually drilling the cabinet sides um, I don't clamp the particular guide plate down the system does come with a set of clamps to use. I find them cumbersome and annoying, you know, especially if I'm batching out a bunch of parts. It just it takes a long time to un unclamp it, reclamp the next board, moving. It just takes a long time. And if you're doing this as a business like I am, you know, time is money. So, and I find that the soft rubber bottom underneath the guide plate is enough to hold it in place along with the positive stops on the system that nothing really moves. The only instance that you have a chance to move, which is why I do do it this way, is when I'm running the router on the guide plate, I always run it away from the end stop. Because as you're moving along, you know, this thing clicks into place. And every time it clicks down and hits the plate, it wants to slide that particular direction. I mean it's momentum and force. So if you have if you always move away from the guide plate the guide stop here then you know it's always going to continue to push the actual stop into the side of the cabinet and not actually move the guide plate. So whereas if you go the other direction you're moving toward the stop it has it can actually move away from your cabinet side and then your holes will actually be off of spacing and not correct. Now I also use this, when I use this system, I always drill my holes with the guide plate or the guide stop at the top of the cabinet side. Now the reason I do this from the top and not the bottom is, especially on base cabinets, if you have a base cabinet side and if you have a partition inside that cabinet, it gets hard to line up the holes from the side of the cabinet to the partition. And in base cabinets especially, the center partition almost always goes up to the top of the cabinet anyway. So if you always drill your holes from the top, you can drill your holes from the top on the sides and use the same markings, the same layout and everything on the partition from the top of the partition. And then you're guaranteed that your holes are always going to line up. Now in wall cabinets, I plow, I run dados in the bottom and the top of the cabinet for the partitions to sit into. So when I cut my partitions for wall cabinets, I always cut them, you know, whatever length necessary to extend to the top of the cabinet, drill my adjustable shelf holes, and then cut that excess off, which is usually about a quarter inch. So if you have to do it that way, if you do it from the bottom of the cabinet, you're going to be wasting more material on that partition by cutting it to longer, drilling the holes, and then cutting that excess off to make the holes line up within the cabinet. So that's why I always, always drill my holes with the stop at the top of the cabinet side or the cabinet partition and not the bottom. As far as my last tip I have to give for this particular system, it's a maintenance tip. I haven't really had to do anything maintenance-wise with this entire system 
except you have to occasionally lube this little pin right here because if you don't like I was finding like I was running into when I did my tool topic video shoot you know when I was running all those cabinet sides this starts building up a little bit of friction if it's not lubed properly and it gets hard to pull the pin up to get it moved along and then it just slows you down now I just use a little bit of uh, JB80 which is like WD40 but better so I mean that's really the only maintenance I ever have to do on this system because everything else has a positive stop or is like a permanently lubed item like the guide rails on the on the router itself well that covers all the tips and tricks I have about the Festool LR32 hole drilling system if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below I will try to get to those if you like this video hit the little thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this or some of the other videos on this channel feel free to hit the subscribe button and you'll get updated on when I release these videos I try to get videos out every week so that's about it have a good day